guys coming at you on a Saturday evening here in beautiful Scouted Valley. I'm about three sheets to the wind, but I'm still good to go. We got a second round matchup here with old Sable and Mulligan. Sable, I didn't catch Mulligan's game. Sable lost his first to Moan, but if you recall, or if you maybe you didn't see it, but it's, I got most of it on my video manager here. It was a very, very good game. Came down to the end. Juan was able to pull it out. So, I was pretty impressed with Sable. I felt like he made like one or two mistakes, but other than that, played a real solid game. And I'm not going to count out Mulligan, but just going off Sable, I'd say he's probably one of the better 0-1s uh, in the field right now. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the Potential squads we might be seeing here. And yeah, effort dudes, just play with the goddamn default maps. I know this is cool and all, but not everyone has the play mats and whatever. Just play with the default, save everyone some time. Especially me, being as important as I am, you know, I can't be... I want to get in as many of these videos as I can. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Sable, what do we got here? So, this is what he ran the first time. And he got a little unlucky Moan. He was able to get Jake and his proto both to range one of Moan's dash. Moan was running a boosted dash Jan Ors loadout. Uh, they were pretty much identical, actually, the two of theirs. But neither of them were really able to ping him for big damage. And then the proto ended up getting picked off. Or maybe I think Jake ended up getting picked off by the... Or never mind, sorry, it was the proto. Got picked off by Jan. And then it came down to it, and Juan was down to like two or three health. So you know he's probably going to die the next turn, but he was able to finish off Sable's dash. So all Sable got was Jan, but I think he likes that squad. Um, this is pretty nice, too. This is a fairly common squad. You know, it's basically the Imperial version of the Double Falcon, but you kind of run it in a different manner. Manner. Kind of the idea, I think, here is you just keep them close together, so there's a lot of... And then kind of get it so the enemy's coming right at you, so there's just a lot of bumping going on. He's got the Vet on Chirino, so he can shoot before any whispers or echoes he might encounter. It's also got his song, that's pretty common. And he's got the Anti-Pursuance for even more damage to go against Loiken. And then Mary Jade, that's uh, enemy ships at range 1. If they don't have a stress, they take one. Real good, real common card to see on Oiken because, you know, it makes it harder to... If you get if you get enemy ships boxed in, well, now they're stressed, so they can, only, they can typically only do some slower moves that are green, right? So it makes it harder to get out of there. And then Intimidation, also fairly common on Oiken. So that's a decent squad. Let's take a look. Hey, Mulligan. M -m -m Mulligan. What's he running here? So he's got Key in. This is a pretty common loadout with Key in. Push the limit, engine, vent sensors, HLC. And he's got two blues with fire control systems, ions. The only thing about this is Key in can really get targeted pretty heavily here. And. Uh, you know, ideally, you kind of want to do your shooting in the asteroids here to try to take advantage of those ion cannons. But if he's going against either of these lists that Sable has, Sable's got the 360 arc, and he's also got dash potentially in the other one, so he would kind of have the advantage within the asteroids, I would think. And I'm at 46 points to put on just an 8 hole ship with only one defense. That's a lot of points. Like... You're really looking to be able to stay back at range 3 here with Kian for that opening engagement take advantage of those secondary weapons. Um, but that's still not bad. And then again, he's got the dash. The same fucking loadout that everyone has. I would say this exact loadout is probably in... Oh... It might be in 25% of the squads in this tournament. It is so freaking common. That exact loadout. 
And I mean, if you were to compare, like, how many players are running the exact same loadout on one ship, as compared to, like, this would be number one, and the second best would probably be at, like, zero. Or, I mean, god damn it. <laughs> probably, it wouldn't even be, there wouldn't even be half as many as this, what would number two be? Maybe, like, a lone academy? Or, oh, that would be my guess, to be honest. Nothing else is just nearly as popular as this. So, and then he's got the HLC with the gunner. Now that's a little surprising. I feel like I'd rather just see Outrider on there because... Uh, you've kind of got Dash to kind of cover him. I think I'd kind of like keep the Fringer out closer to the enemies. So if they get in close to range 1, you still have Dash to cover them. And then the Fringer should be able to pick out some target out at range 2 or 3. So I'm not a big fan of that, but... We'll see. And here we go. So it's one for the bees and two for the 2400s for Mulligan. And one for Dash and two for the Decimators for Sable. So we get Decimators versus the B Wings. Interesting. Sable was thinking, and we'll just be going with Dash. So neither of them go with, or I'm, s oh fuck, I might have had those flip flopped. Let's see what, what's coming up, and we'll just be going with Dash. What the hell does that mean? <clears throat> Nope, no, they they do both go with dash. I had the dials flip flopped, so yeah. In this situation, hmm, this is gonna be interesting. I've never seen someone run this before. The Outrider HLC has been so common, but just the HLC on the Fringer. Not li not nearly as common. He's got the gunner to kind of kind of compensate for it, where he's got a great chance of getting at least one hit there. But it's gonna be hard for him to get some sh hits on those B those A wings if they can get to just range one. Even though it's gonna be a three on three, the A wings gonna be shooting back three on two. So that will be the. the That will be the goal for a mulligan. And Sable's at 99, I guess. And he gives initiative to mulligan. Mulligan. I don't know how you pronounce that. Mulligan. So Dash and... Dash are both seven. Other than that, initiative really is not going to matter too much. <sighs> I don't know how you people find me. I just started the stream like two minutes ago, and I've already got a viewer. <laughs> Whoever you are, though, I appreciate it. Maybe to sit at work refreshing, wait for me to come on so you don't have to do work, huh? Who are you? How come I can't see who you are, you secretive bastard?
Meh, meh. Well, yeah, if you're, it's going to be super difficult, especially to, especially to focus on Jake, but obviously with these double heavy laser cannons, you're just looking at the, uh, uh, range three joust from the start. Want to get a good shot on those A-wings. He's got a potential. If you can get Jake outside of range one, even at range one, actually, if it gets to range one of this Fringer, he's got a great chance to just kill him right off the bat. These two guys shooting at him. So I think if you're Sable, you want to try to get those protos in range one of old Dash, but at the same time, I mean, because then if you just do that, then Mulligan will just shoot both his shots at dash at sable's dash that is so mm, i don't know who i like in this like on paper i don't know who i'd rather have here those a wings are really negated by those double firing arcs Detached and subdivided in the mass production zone. So Sable goes all debris field. Mulligan goes all asteroid. That's interesting. I wonder what the decision-making process for Sable is there. Is it because they're bigger and it feels like his big ships will have a little bit more trouble trying to navigate over them? Obviously, if he gets a double stress on Dash, that would be huge. Outright, or the Fringer doesn't really care so much. But if he gets the stress on one of them, then you know that next turn you're just going to do either a one move or a two straight. So it'll make it a little bit easier for his A-wings to know where they're going to be at. But, you know, they're still going to be able to shoot those, so... But that's what he goes with. Mm, we kind of get him kind of bunched in. There's none at the corners. So a bit of a tight formation here. It's going to be hard for Mulligan to keep his guys close together, but I don't think he really cares so much about them having to stay in too close formation, seeing as they both got 360 arcs out to range 3. What the fuck? I didn't even do anything. There. Thank <laughs> you. 
And we got Grapus and Theorist in here checking this out. Oh look, I'm making people happy. <laughs> uh Civil Mulligan Come to me, my followers. Come join the horde. So he's really going to spread them out here. And he puts Jake way out wide down there. And I kind of like that because like, if Jake's able to get to range 1 of dash, which I feel like he's pretty confident he can, even though the outrider will be able to shoot him with the heavy laser, I think it feels like Jake can probably survive one, maybe even two shots from that. And then at the same time, if the Outrider chooses to shoot at Jake, no, never mind. He's gonna put him in. He's gonna put him closer. Like a really neat thing, Sable. I'm kind of surprised he doesn't flank because those A-wings are so much better when they get on the tail of one a ship. But like I said, it's just gonna be hard to protect really any of his ships he kinda can like by trying to get to range one to dash but I guess really the blind spot would be if you can get outside of dashes range three arc that would be super hard though and then just get somewhere outside of fringes arc to where he can still shoot at you but you're not at range one like range two or three, preferably. That's why I thought he might kind of put the proto up there, just go straight ahead. Maybe survive one hit, but I guess he wants to make that fringer turn into the asteroid field, so that's probably why he went with that. And they're going to leave the template up again. The fuck, edit panels? I don't know what that is. Let's do this! There it goes, alright. So a -wing's gonna take it slow. Or at least the proto is gonna go too forward. I think what you might see, he might try, he might just bump dash actually, because that'd be pretty big if he's able to keep him from getting the double action at the start, but you might see him rush the pro at dash, and then try to get Jake in there too, and then keep his dash out wide, and that way he might be able to avoid the HLC shot from the fringer, and then dash is going to have to shoot at this dash, and he'll be able to concentrate at least Jake and his dash on this one. And he won't take an HLC shot from the other one. I'm kind of surprised he went that fast with the Fringer. So that would probably see like a 1 or a 2. But... He's probably going to get a shot on someone. I think he's looking to try to get Jake. Close dash two. What do we see here? Are we gonna see a barrel roll potentially, or is he just gonna keep it? Might see a boost, right? Mm. And a barrel roll.
God damn it. Bear rolls to give himself a bit of an alley next turn. Of course, what am I, he's dashed, what am I saying, he doesn't give a shit. He's gonna focus. Thought he might just leave it so he doesn't stress out, but since he's got Katarn, you see this a lot, is that guys will intentionally stress themselves on that first turn, even when they know there's no shooting, so next turn when they do a move, they'll get that free focus from Kyle. So he takes it slow with all three. Mm. So now, you're in a bit of a spot. Do you go five forward with both? Try to... I think... I can't imagine this guy's just going to one left bank. I think, I don't think anything else would be a little crazy. We just don't want that proto to die without getting a shot off. So... Oh, but he's going to boost Pharrell. So now, with that, kind of leads me to believe that he is really looking to get to range one of someone. Maybe he's thinking he's going to rush at dash. This guy banks, he can get outside the HLC. And maybe he just live with the proto going down the first turn. Or maybe he's just gonna get real tricky and do like a one or two left with the proto. Just get outside that HLC shot. Well, they decide pretty quickly that Mulligan takes it back on dash now. I think you gotta imagine this is gonna, just going to be a one forward. You guys comment. Make comments on the game so I don't have to talk the entire time. I will lose my voice box. I'm doing an all-nighter here, guys. I'm going to do every single game until there's no more left to be played. I need to preserve my voice. Chat in the chat room now. So the five forward with the proto. Hmm. Where's that gonna put him? Ooh. Now what? Does he just? Focus, and he's going to boost. Hmm. Well, it's a friend got in store. Got to think it's a one left bank. Yeah. Now, do you focus here, or do you barrel roll? He's going to focus. Kind of thought he'd barrel roll because with that gunner, he's got a pretty good chance. He's probably just going to get one hit on the proto at least. Now he's going to take a couple. And if he would barrel roll, he could barrel roll back to here and do a one left bank again and potentially get uh, the HLC shot on Jake or Dash next turn. Especially since his Dash is going right, it looks like. And I'm not crazy about that flying onto the asteroid. Because, yeah, Dash has his ability, but now you've got to burn an action just to get off. And, you know, I don't even think I would barrel roll in that situation, because you're just on a debris field. I'd think I'd just keep it and just shoot off of it next turn. Like, I know what he's thinking. He's thinking he wants to get away from this dash, but I don't think that's going to happen with 
the boost barrel roll ability. I think he's at least going to get a shot on the Fringer. And Mulligan here, clearly a little bit new. Hmm. And Grapus and Moan. <laughs> I talk about this every game. The tournament rules. Let me see if I can find this. And get an official definition. Do, 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 do. The f where is it? Uh. Oh, come on. Did they delete the original post? They did. God damn it. Huh. He deleted the original post on the TC tournament. Or at least he took it off the front page. That's surprising. Anyway, I thought it said something about it. you're not supposed to comment on anything unless you're asked, but anything game related. But I guess that's just a ruling. It's you know obviously not a strategy, anything like that. But I was under the impression you couldn't do that. So whatever. So yeah, this dash is just going to boost right off. I think you'll probably see him check for a lock. Here, question is on who. Probably think the Fringer, I would imagine. Gonna barrel roll right. Interesting. I guess he wants to go with that dash first. Feels like that's a much stronger ship. Will we get a three right bank from Jake here? We've got Dash 2, Mulligan. Come on, son. You're running the same ship. Come on. So now i got to figure we'll see a focus to boost here. Now, does that get clear? Yeah. So now, do you do you evade or do you lock? Because you know the Fringer is probably going at the Proto, so you figure Dash will probably go at him too to finish him off before he's able to shoot. So I think I would lock here. I would gamble and lock. Because even though Dash will have an HLC shot on Jake. It's going to be an unmodified attack, and you might still be able to save your focus. So I think I would lock dash if it was me. He's not even going to push the limit. I guess because he knows he's probably going to run over that debris field next turn. He doesn't want to fool with that. But isn't it he going to take... Well, yeah, I guess he'll take one anyway, so... He, I don't think he'll get any actions anyway, because he's going to stress out. Anyway. He gets one hit. I guess maybe he just didn't want to double stress, I guess. And one evade. I think a 
Yeah. In hindsight, probably should have barrel rolled then boosted. I didn't. I didn't say that either. So I'm stupid too. But I think that would have been the better move. I think. HLC is going at the proto. Ooh, only one hit. Oh, but he's got the lock. Sorry. Oh, and he still only gets one hit. That's tough. That is bad, bad luck. He only gets one anyway. Yeah, and I didn't really like that barrel roll either, because now he's got to shoot through that debris field at dash. I guess he had to, though. He was worried about Jake bumping, so I guess that's probably why he did it. And he gets three. Ooh, three hits. That's big. Fringer is going to go at the Proto as well. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Oh, wow. Well, I guess he was due for that, but... That's tough because I felt like Sable would have had a great chance to run that proto in front of Dash and action deny him next turn. And and plus he doesn't get to shoot back either, so pretty even turn on both ends. You take three here, but then you lose the proto. I'd probably I'd probably prefer Mulligans around there. Cause Jake's in a bit of a bad spot now. He's not gonna get an action, which is Death for A Wings. And this has worked out nicely for Mulligan. He's piloted pretty well, I think, because now I think you're probably going to see the Fringer do a two or a three left turn to try to get an HLC shot in either one of those guys. And Dash is probably going to do like a one left bank, try to run away. And Jake's not going to be able to get... He's not going to be able to do much here. Like, you're almost tempted to just... Run away with Jake. Just so he doesn't get hit. I mean, just not having that action. Not even getting a focus or an evade. That's tough. And if he goes left, he's 
gonna get shot at both those ships. Maybe not by both the heavy laser cannons, but he will get shot. So Proto is about to get the block. My gun's dash has gone the wrong way. Yeah, I feel like he would have got the block, but now it's too late. Anyone tuning in late? I'm gonna take a quick gander at the squads. Here they are. The dashes are both carbon copies of each other, but then he's running the fringer with Gunner and HLC. And then Jake's pretty decked out too, but so we're not gonna be able to take advantage of that push the limit this turn. And he's really thinking it over too. Because he knows if he goes left, he's gonna be in it. But he kinda doesn't want to run him away and just leave his own dash out there to get fried by both of them. Go two on one. <sighs> Look at all these assholes watching. You fuckers better not be here for my game. Too much pressure when you got all these people watching. Should have just demanded I play at 8 in the morning like I did round 1. Just turn right. Feel for a moment. Yeah, a one right turn probably would, and he's going to move last too, so I think that's what I would recommend too, although, nah, I don't think a one, actually, you know, a one left might clear. It would be really close, but that, see how quickly that thing turns? Ooh, I don't know, I'd be really, really close. Maybe that's what's another thing Sable's contemplating. So if you do that, then you've got some options, because then you can probably barrel roll boost outside of that HLC, and potentially, and you probably couldn't get into range one of dash, but you could at least avoid the HLC shot from the fringer. And focus, boost, evade, maybe. But even though... They say that was a fortunate kill that he got three hits versus three natural hits against three blanks. You gotta realize the proto also was unmodified, and Fritcher still had a focus to burn, and Dash had an HLC shot with a target lock that only yielded one hit, so the Fringer's attack was lucky, but the Dash's was very unlucky, so I feel like it kinda evened out. So Fringer one left turns, hoping to get the heavy laser shot. On at least one of these guys, and I think he probably will. Unless Dash does a one left bank and then barrel rolls into him. But even that, you're gonna take a three shot. But still, I guess that's better than the four. What do you do with Jake, though? Barrel rolls left, forward. Hmm. I don't know about that. And now he's going to boost? Well, I guess he's just protecting his dash here, but... Hmm. Yeah, I guess he'll probably have a shot anyway, but... It's going to make... He's probably going to shoot through that debris field now if he's going for this dash. Two forward. And a barrel roll right. It's not a bad move. And with that, you have to think Jake's going right now. 
So I think... Yeah, I think that dash is still going to have a shot. I was going to check just to make sure. Yep. Success. Yeah. And MJ goes one right. Theorist called it. So now what do you do here? I feel like you focus to boost right. Just to check if you can. You probably can't. He's going to barrel roll. I think he just wants to make sure he gets away from that dash. So now Wondering, am I clear of dash? Or am I not? Do I evade or do I boost? He's just gonna boost. Ooh, and actually, he's outside of the Fringer's Arc now. So that was a really nicely played turn by Sable, I think. Because now it's going to be his dash with a focused target lock going against the Fringer. And going forward next turn, this dash is going to have to do a one left bank and then waste some actions on barrel rolling to get back into range. It's two hits and a focus. Ooh, blanks the target lock. Oh, he goes for both of them. And they're both blanks. That's fairly bad luck, but he gets two blanks, so two hits, and he saves his focus. I don't know if I'm a fan of that move. Because now there's only a 50% chance he's going to Roll the focus on defense. Eh, well, now of course he looks like a genius for doing it, but. So you take that. You take one, he takes two. I and mean, you're happy with that if you're Sable. But now you've got to work hard to get the Fringer, or to get Jake back into the fight. Because you don't want to have Dash going two on one for too long. And Dash will probably be able to avoid the heavy laser shot. I think you might see the Fringer go right and try to get the heavy laser shot on Jake. Because, I mean, he could go straight. But if he goes straight, not only is he going to land on that debris field, but I feel like this... Sable's dash is maneuverable enough with his abilities to be able to get outside of that arc. So I think you might see him go right here. And I think I'd be surprised to see anything but a one left bank right there. The A-Wing support has failed and bailed. Looks like Malong's game already. Well... In terms of damage, they're completely even. He, he did lose his prototype, so his firepower is down.
but if you can get, because I think, you know, you're probably going to see a two right turn here. If you can get Jake back within it and get him to range one a dash, then he can really put the hurt on him. Because I don't think the Fringer is really suited to be able to cover him unless he's able to get him turned about face and get a heavy laser shot on Jake. Otherwise, like if the Fringer is just at range two or three, firing his 362 dice against Jake, I think you'll live with that with Sable. So that's what you're looking for with Sable. Not this current coming turn, but the next one. If you can get him in, back into range one of dash. Falcon say everyone watching this shit. No one was on Friday. I guess us X Wing nerds do all our partying on Friday and then Saturday is just your recoup day. There's a three right turn. Ooh. That's a little more than I thought. I thought I'd just do a one. He's going to lock Jig. Oh yeah, and Jake's in some trouble now because I think this dash is just going to go right at him. Yep. He just gets a lock. Well, it'd be an absolutely brilliant move by Sable if he goes left here with Jake, but I don't think I don't think he had that in store.
I think he's thinking about a boost or a barrel roll here, because right now he's going to be shooting through that debris field. I think you should push the limit. Either boost or barrel roll to take away that extra agility dice from that fringer. It's going to be straight. That'll probably be good anyway. I figured he'd probably go left though to try to turn himself back towards these guys. Nope, he's going into it. Oh, and he's in some trouble. What do you do here? Maybe. I think you've focused a Barrel roll left. Yeah. And now he's just going to boost left, I think, and pray he can just at least get outside of Dash's arc. Or he's going to evade. Ooh. Did that make it? Ooh, that's going to be super close. I think Dash might have a shot. But he's put that asteroid between himself and the Fringer. So that's going to be a 4 on 4. He just got to hope Dash doesn't have a shot though. Because you figure even with... Oh, he gets outside. That's big. Because you'll take the Fringer shooting 4 on 4 against the Focus Evade. And, and then Dash is going to be shooting 4 on 2 unmodified with his focus target lock. You take that. If you're, I think that's another good turn by Sable. He's going to make the Fringer pay here. 4 on 2. He's going to lock the blank. And he gets a focus. Oh, he re-rolls the focus and gets a crit. Yeah, of course you'd focus. Why not? Oh, what a ballsy move. And that's going to pay off. He's going to get a crit on the Fringer. Boy, if that was a... If that's a munitions failure. That would be so huge. And then direct hit, you'll take that. I'll always take a direct hit. So the Fringer's down to four. Or actually, he's down to three. Ooh, so dash... May be able to one-shot him next turn. But see, that's why I didn't like that boost forward, because now the Fringer's got a good chance of just getting away from him. Well, he didn't modify his ship's stats, but... Yeah, that's a four-on-four. Four. You've got a great chance of dodging here if you're Jake. It's two hits and a focus. Three hits. Oh, he's going to dodge it all. Man, that is clutch. And now, even though the proto's dead, I think you got to say the game is firmly leaning towards Sables at this point. French was down to three health. And Dash himself is only at 7. And now, you've got a great chance for Jake to close to that range 1. And what do you do with the Fringer in this situation? I think you might just see him go like a 3 right bank. 
Oh, we got Gunner. Oh, well, yeah, it doesn't matter. He gets five evades. That's funny. Yeah, I think he should have shot at Dash with a Gunner. Anyway. I think you're going to see him do a three right bank here. And just try to block Jake's. I think... Jake has got to be doing a two right bank here. Maybe a two right turn, but... I think you just try to block him in action, deny his ass. So I was going to say Jake's going to have a great opportunity to get to range one of Dash here, but... So goes to the two right bank. Ooh. Yeah. I would say he's outside by a pixel. Sable maybe doesn't agree though. That's it. You can see some blue in there, so I'd say that's outside. Meh. I disagree.
Yeah. And I think that's going to make Jake bump, too. One right bank. That should be good, I think. Oh, I mean, left. Ugh. No. What a misstep there. That is pretty much game. Because now, neither of them are going to be able to shoot Pharrell. If Pharrell does the two right bank, anyway. Ooh, that is brutal. I don't like that move. I feel like it's high risk, low reward because... It's such tight quarters. And what are you really hoping for there? I mean, even if Jig bumped, that still might have been range one. I guess obviously he was thinking he wasn't going to bump so he'd be able to barrel off it, but yeah. But if the Fringer had rolled left, then he wouldn't have bumped Jake. But I guess, yeah, in hindsight, then he could have just barreled off with Dash. So yeah. He probably should have realized that after he moved the Frencher that he probably should have barrel rolled.
Well, it's a two right turn, but it still bumps. But I don't know if you're. I think if you're Sable, yeah, we really don't give a crap if that bumps now. Two hits for Jake. One evade. Three hits. Oh, wait, it's only two. So they're still in it, but it's gonna take some expert piloting to do something here. Basically, looking to deny Jake a shot. And get it so both you guys can shoot at him. And you ne don't necessarily need to get that HLC shot with your Fringer. I think maybe do a two or three left turn with the fringer there, and then you just go one straight with dash. That's probably what I would do.
So Frinder two left. Looks like that's just gonna clear. It's gonna lock Jake. I think I might have just focused there, but that's not the worst move ever. What's old Dash got in store? Going four straight, interesting. He's not going to push the limit. Wow. Guess it feels like and one left bank wouldn't clear, but man, it's gonna be hard to finish off Jake there with. I guess he already has a lock, but still, I think I would have pushed the limit and risked it. Three right turn. Should be good, I think. Yeah. Ooh. I think he's going to focus to boost here. Ooh, does that have a shot? Ooh, I don't think that does. I wonder if we can get a barrel roll nudged in there. Ooh, and he does. No, nope. it's probably all she wrote then. Dash probably gonna finish off. Well, maybe not. I thought push the limit focus would give him a stress. Ooh. I think Maligan might be right there.
Ugh. Oh, he gets four hits. And that won't do it. So the Fringer's dead. Doesn't even get a shot. And, yeah, Mulligan calls it. Well. Everyone's going to say it's that mistake by Mulligan running himself onto the asteroid that costs. I think, still feel like Sable had the advantage. I'm not saying Sable had it won at that point. But I feel like he clearly was the favorite. At that point, I feel like even up till that point, he'd outpiloted Mulligan a little bit. Uh, Mulligan didn't play terribly. That was a pretty bad move there, because yeah, he could have gotten out of there. He could have barreled his outrider away, like Thera said, and then did whatever the hell with Dash to get away from there. But uh, I still don't feel like he's good enough. That he's going to have a chance to get back into it. But 0-2, oh you're in a hole. And Sable, you're looking pretty good now because you get a, you only lost 15 points here. And he killed 44 his first game. So he's going to be one of the better, the high ranked one on ones I think. So he's into it. So good win for Sable. Thanks for watching, guys. Looks like there is not another one going on right now. So I'll kill the stream. Unless y'all got any comments, anything y'all want to talk about, discuss. My game should be going down fairly soon. Well, actually, enough for a couple hours. Um, Oh, oh, actually, 7 p.m., so I guess Grant should be on pretty soon. I'm not going to be streaming it, of course, but maybe someone else can. You guys can check it out on theirs. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all. If there's another game going on later, I have casted with one other person before. Uh, I don't know. Didn't feel like it went too well because he was from Spain, I think, and he's it was Jesus or uh, you know Ringo, and so you know there's a bit of a cultural gap there for starters. And then he said he like hardly ever speaks English, so he had a super thick accent too. And you know he's one and zero. He's a pretty good player. He's smart, but I just didn't feel like we had a whole lot of chemistry. So I didn't feel like it was my best cast, but. I'm still going to, I still plan on having other guests from time to time. If any of you are interested in being a guest, um, add me on Skype, Blair.Bunky, and we can talk about basically what it's going to be, or you can message me on Team Covenant, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, that's it for this one. 
like I said, I'll probably be on. Well, just send me a message if you want to, theorist, but I'll probably, uh, I think there's another game going on later tonight other than mine, so if you guys, I'll, I'll post again on the uh, round two pairings if I'm doing one more, so stay tuned, but thanks for watching. Peace.